from the UK. Give it up for Stephen K. Amos. Thank you guys very much. Uh, come here, guys. What a, a fantastic, diverse bill you've had tonight. And I got here just in time for your Mardi Gras. Arguably the largest LGBTQIFYZ... <laughs> the fuck it's called now? <laughs> well, someone's just dropped a Scrabble board at a swingers party. <laughs> yeah, having had that, you guys are still debating gay marriage? What the fuck? Even South Africa has got gay marriage, and they were marginally more racist than you. <laughs> In the UK, we had our debate about gay marriage, and do you know what a far-right councillor said? He said this, if we legalise gay marriage, the UK will be beset by storms and floods. <laughs> and guess what? Last year, we had the worst flood in history. <laughs> So maybe he had a point. Because <laughs> we all know after the flood, there comes a rainbow. <laughs> and the gays will inherit the earth. <laughs> However, my Aussie mates, my blokey mates, Aussie blokey mates, very supportive. They're like, Steve, Steve, what kind of man should we get for you? What kind of man should we get for you? And I said, you know what, a man in uniform. Barry from Bunnings was not quite what I had in mind. <laughs> but as we end, I have to say a couple of things to you, and one of them is this. As you become a very, very successful and wealthy comedian, <laughs> let's be honest, some of the stories you tell on stage become harder to sell, because you no longer do the things that the audience does. <laughs> I mean, if Will came on stage tonight talking about him having to queue up at Pie Face, <laughs> you'd go, fuck off. <laughs> you don't do that. You're telling us that because you want us to think that you're like us. I want you know, guys here to know I will never be one of those guys. I've got your back. I, for example, have got on a bus. <laughs> for research <laughs> to see how you live your terrible lives. <laughs> I mean, just one stop <laughs> from the terminal to the plane. <laughs> I do everything everybody else does. I cook, I go shopping, I shower, especially when the public touch me. <laughs> I go to the toilet and sometimes I check my phone and sometimes I've dropped it in, you see? Like you guys, I've accidentally dropped my phone in the toilet. Except in my case, neither of my wipers were able to catch it in time. <laughs> it's okay, they've been sacked. <laughs> and then of course, it's panic stations, because everything is on that phone. And the second you hear that splash, you shit yourself. <laughs> well, you try not to do that. <laughs> it won't survive that as well. And then of course, you've got to whip it straight back out which for me is quite tricky because there's so much penis in the way. <laughs> Just me. Then you're gonna wipe it down, give it a rinse and put it on the hairdryer and then do the same to your phone. <laughs> Good night, thank you very much. <laughs>